Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today I'm going to be doing another one of my pop-up chibi projects, a sort of paper craft project where you can pop the characters up and they have a kind of three-dimensional quality at the end of the project. Now, uh, my concept this time is to do a sculptor, that is to say a, a chibi artist character who is chiseling a sculpture out of marble, and the sculpture that she's going to be uh, creating is one of Vanellope von Schwitz, the adorable little uh, glitch character from Wreck-It Ralph. But let's get started with drawing some basic guidelines for the chibi artist character over here on the left. Okay, so I've got the head shape in place, but before I talk about that, I need to uh, go back and talk about the uh, dimensions of this square. It's three and three quarters inches on all sides. That comes out to around nine and a half uh, centimeters, and then if I've, I've just split it into four uh, equal squares there in the middle. So uh, the shape of the head, as you can see, it's sort of turned in three quarters, which makes it very round over here. Notice that this line splits about one third of it, you know, for positioning purposes, and then it lines up very neatly with the top. Uh, line there. This is a little bit of a tricky um, shape here. We, we come down to the cheek and then down to a point of the chin. Just do your best to replicate that. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and get lines in a sort of a central line here for placing the nose and the mouth, and then two lines that go across for placing the eyes. All right, so notice the placement uh, of this line. I'd say it's just a little over a third between the chin up to the top of the head. That's because the facial features on chibi characters are generally moved way down low. So this is going to be like the top of each one of the eyes. The bottom of each one of the eyes is really pretty much right between. That line goes right between. And then uh, just, yeah, do your best to kind of get this central line here that later on will allow us uh, to place the nose and the mouth. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and get the pose in place. All right, so I decided to let these lines trail off a little bit because my plan is to put a, an apron in here that will end up uh, obscuring a lot of these lines. But um, basically, I'd say notice that the shoulder here is coming uh, quite a bit to the right of that line, whereas this foot is coming real close to it. Uh, I guess that's her right foot. <laughs> Her right foot that's on the left side of the page. Uh, and then again, uh, this other foot, the, getting her a big confident stance as she chisels away uh, the tip of the toe coming real close to that central line. Well, let's go ahead and get, um, this will be the arm that's holding the hammer. I'll go ahead and get that in place. Okay, so um, I would say pay attention to the angle of the uh, elbow here. I'm sort of correcting a bit, actually, here. I feel like this line should come down a little bit. Um, and um, the hammer itself is very nearly uh, vertical in the pose that uh, I've created. Notice that the bottom part of the hammer actually lines up there. That might help you for placing that. And um, Let's go ahead and do that apron I was talking about right down here. Okay, so I figured I'd go ahead and get this other arm uh, in place uh, while I was at it, but uh, you can sort of uh, see the shape of the apron as it comes across, and as I said, it begins to obscure the legs, so let's just go ahead and erase those away. Goodbye, legs. We don't need you anymore. Um, and uh, later on, I'm going to go ahead and put the actual uh, chisel uh, in place there. But I think before I go any further uh, with this figure, it's time to get old uh, Vanellope in here. So uh, let's begin with the basic guideline for the head shape. So you can see it's kind of like a mirror image version of the head we drew over here. Smaller, of course. I mean, she's not doing a life-size uh, Vanellope, or at least not uh, her own size. And um, there's even uh, going to be a small pedestal down here that will make this character shorter still from head to toe. But um, I think we're going to kind of do the same thing here. But notice the difference maybe proportionally uh, as we get the lines in for the eyes. So these lines look pretty similar uh, at first glance, but actually there are uh, significant differences. Remember I said over here it's real close to a third of the distance. This one I would say is much uh, higher up than that, getting close to half of the distance. Uh, and then this was split very evenly, the lower eye uh, line, whereas here it's much closer, right? It's not really dividing that space in half. So you're going to see the eye placement um, and facial feature placement be um, subtly different, let's just say, between the chibi character and the Vanellope character. But let's move on to drawing the pose uh, for Vanellope. So 
So I decided to go ahead and get the base of the statue uh, in place, uh, but that's probably the easy part. The harder part is to get this uh, S-shaped kind of curve of the body in place. Hopefully, if you notice where it begins, just over here to the left of that uh, central line, um, and how close it comes to the edge here, that can kind of help you place that first line. And then uh, sometimes, you know, looking at what we call negative space, this shape right here, that might help you get that other line in place. Well, let's go ahead and get the arms uh, drawn where they need to be. So I decided to go ahead and get the uh, skirt in place here. We'll be adding uh, considerably more detail to that later on. But notice because of the pose, we see um, a gap here in this one arm, whereas over here there is no uh, gap, which will be helpful later on when we're cutting this pose out. I try, as you may notice, to minimize uh, the areas that I'm going to have to cut out, and that's why this all becomes one sort of uh, uniform uh, block of uh, paper right there. Um, well, we're very nearly done with uh, the basic guidelines. I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and get the, um, the hairstyle basic guidelines for the hairstyles, the eyes and uh, the ears, or the one ear uh, that is visible uh, in the case of this character. Uh, and then finally we can knock it off with the time lapse and get into some real-time drawing. Okay, well, quite a lot of stuff in that last little segment. Um, you can see that the characters both have their hair sort of parted down the middle, so uh, they'll be sort of echoing one another that way. Uh, the hairstyles differ, though, in uh, that there are pigtails over here, and you can kind of notice that this one uh, touches right there where those lines intersect. That might help you for placing that. Um, Vanellope's hairstyle, uh, more of like a ponytail coming up way high, something I hadn't really noticed so much until I started studying the character. Another thing, the size of uh, Vanellope's ears, really very large. Um, uh, certainly compared to uh, the Chibi character, but I would say <laughs> compared to a lot of characters, uh, she uh, I had never noticed until, again, I had a closer look at the character, the ears, the outsized ears, very much a sort of trademark characteristic. Well, uh, as I said, it's time to stop with all this time lapse and uh, get into some real-time drawing. Before I do that, though, I want to zoom in uh, as close as I can uh, on the chibi character artist over here so that you can see the details uh, as I move further along with the drawing. Well, I was able to zoom in a little closer anyway, and uh, one thing that I did is I started to lighten up these guidelines just a little bit with the eraser, uh, leaving them visible, though, so that you can see how I use them. Uh, for the placement of various lines. Uh, let's begin by drawing the eyes. Um, chibi characters uh, have, uh, of course, um, uh, really large eyes in proportion to the rest of their facial features. My theory has always been that it's because the eyes play such a prominent role in um, emotions, uh, conveying uh, facial expressions, and so we um, we, I say we as if <laughs> we chibi artists, <laughs> we the members of the club. Uh, no, I shouldn't say we, I should say they, the people who invented uh, the chibi uh, style, um, it seems to me, it, uh, enlarged the eyes and anything relating to the um, uh, conveying the emotions and minimized uh, the parts of the face that don't, for example, the nose. Um, and uh, so anyway, that, uh, that's my theory. And I don't know why I'm spending so much time <laughs> in this video talking about my weird little theories. But let's talk about this upper eyelash line and how it extends. Basically, because she's sort of turning away a little bit, looking back at us, um, the uh, upper line curves away uh, on this side. We don't see so much of it over here. Uh, but over on this far uh, extended eye, we see quite a bit of it curving around. Uh, of course, uh, the, the iris gets compressed quite a bit from side to side as the face turns away. Away from us. And I have made a little indication of a lower eye lash line. Not always visible. Some artists will choose to just uh, uh, not even indicate that at all. I'm going to go ahead and put in some uh, eyebrows, just sort of gently curving. Uh, notice the distance between the eyes and the eyebrows, always important. The lower down they are, namely the more uh, intense possibly angry, the uh, expression will be. And um, let's go ahead and get a, a little cute little smile down here, pretty near to the chin, the way I'm drawing it. 
And though I don't normally uh, draw a nose, I thought it might be kind of fun to do just a little dot of, of a nose, and uh, it is going to line up in this three-quarter view real close to where that line was and uh, real close just really maybe between the eye and the mouth is where the, I'm gonna put that dot and uh, yeah sorry about these lines having to be erased you know some people don't need guidelines in which case you can just skip that whole part of it but for those of you who have trouble getting things uh, getting lines in the right place uh, that can be a helpful way of uh, dealing with that problem let's go ahead and move on to drawing the hair um, I've given her a little strand of hair that comes down here between the eye and the ear, as so often I do. And um, there's going to be a big shape of uh, hair here. Like I said, the hair sort of parted uh, down the middle rather than bangs, which is uh, something that I almost turned into a default hairstyle for a lot of these chibi characters. Um, and so, yeah, this time we're trying something a little bit different. Going to have the hair parted down the middle, and uh, it has like a big sort of almond shape, except I'm making it a little flatter here at the top, um, as I imagine the hair sort of rising and then curving back down. And so let's go ahead and um, do maybe a little indication of the hair joining the uh, forehead right here before it flops down over here. And what I think I'm going to do, and this has more to do with my paper craft approach, is to have the hair um, actually join up. Maybe the hammer is going to be coming slightly in front of the hair. Let's do it that way. But uh, again, just a method of uh, making making the form stronger. You know, when you join these things together, they'll be less uh, flopping around. So I'm going to come over here and finish off that uh, line of the hair. All of this kind of resting pretty neatly on that initial guideline. I'm going to go ahead and erase this line of the head. And everyone groans. It's like, you got all, you had us draw these lines, and now you're telling us to erase them? Do you realize how much of my time you have wasted this morning? Uh, or afternoon. Or evening. <laughs> I'm working on this in the morning. I don't know if you're watching this in the morning. <laughs> What's with me today? I'm very random and goofy. Um, let's erase this line here on the other side of the head. And uh, what I want to do is get a uh, little bit of a ribbon in place here. I don't know if artists customarily, customarily put ribbons in their hair prior to working on sculptures, but this one does. And uh, again, uh, always thinking with paper craft of the contour that I'm creating. So you might be tempted to make a really interesting uh, shape uh, for the bow, but I'm thinking about, boy, I need to cut along here, so let's try and keep it a little bit simple, you know? So that's just one of the things with paper craft. Of course, when I do a video like this, it's not a given that you have to do it as a uh, pop up. <clears throat> paper craft kind of a project. You could just do a 2D drawing, you know. That's kind of why I like doing it this way. It becomes a chibi drawing lesson in 2D. Or if you want to, you know, go whole hog, follow all the way along to the end, it becomes a, a paper craft lesson. Anyway, I'm adding in uh, extra lines here. Maybe give myself just a little contour. Again, keeping in mind that I need to cut around that later on. But I want it to look a little more hair-like. And uh, maybe just a little indication of the interior of the ear here, here. And yeah, later on I may add more uh, detail to this. Well, we certainly should get some detail of the eyes. Now, I've decided to have the light source come from the left and shadows falling on the right. So that means a highlight in the eye should be over here on the left uh, with the sun or a lamp or whatever it is. Uh, creating that highlight. I'm, I'm putting a nice big um, pupil, much, much larger than would be uh, present in real life in all but the most dilated of eyes. And again, compressing everything, also making sure I get that highlight in there. Oh, and I think we can maybe do a hint of the uh, upper eyelid fold here. Why not throw caution to the wind? And, um, you know, the more I look at it, the more I'm not liking seeing this lower eyelash. So I'm going to, like, greatly minimize that maybe just do away with it. We'll see. We'll see what becomes of you, lower eyelash line. Um, but we certainly have some more details to go to in terms of uh, this apron. Um, 
Now it's not like a cooking apron, it's more like a working apron, you know, if you're uh, an artist and you're dealing with uh, paint and so forth, you might wear one of these, but uh, to have it stay in place we want it tying behind the back, so I'm going to go ahead and get uh, a little indication of uh, uh, a knot tied back there. Again, don't want to make it too complex because I have to cut around that later on. Maybe get a line right across the midsection here and um, folds uh, to make it look more like cloth. Maybe get a, like a looping fold that comes down like so. You're, you're in a sort of a cartoony realm here so you don't have to get too concerned with serious um, you know, clothing folds and wrinkles unless you want to. I'm not going to stop you if you want to get <laughs> photorealistic on your chibi. Um, let's go ahead here and refine the uh, hand. Uh, I imagine her wearing a glove to avoid chafing blisters. Uh, I always, when I'm doing like a hand clenched around a hammer like this, uh, I like to indicate the uh, pointer finger in the contour of the hand, but then just forget about the rest of those fingers. Just I'm forgetting about them. They're gone, so far as I'm concerned. And then, uh, yeah, come, I'm going to come down here and make a sort of um, edge to the uh, glove that is different from the uh, cloth on her forearm. That is to say, just creating a sort of a contour there to make it obvious that she's wearing gloves. Wrinkles tend to occur here near the elbow. So I'm going to go ahead and erase away the guideline again with the erasing of the lines. Krilly, why do you do this to us? Uh, maybe get a little indication of uh, uh, wrinkles right here near the glove. How about that? And um, even even in a cartoony style, I'm sort of thinking about how what direction would the cloth be pulled in. I feel like she's raising her arm that high. It's probably going to be pulled off. In this direction and if we got to be consistent with this idea of the gloves so I'm going to come over here and uh, let's get one nice big thumb here as she holds this um, chisel in place if indeed chisel is the right word far be it for me to know the right word for anything uh, but I'm doing kind of the same thing over here with a pointer finger uh, becoming more uh, visible as it curves around and the other fingers sort of just um, joining together as a single mass. Now it is time for me to get a chisel in place, so let me figure out the uh, direction of that. I think maybe just a slight tilt. She's maybe refining Vanellope's hair here. And what I'm probably going to do when I get to this, because this does become quite flimsy, I may just uh, cut right between the two just to make it easier on, on me. And I'm, I'm, to, I'm, I'm sort of debating as to whether to try to cut around this with all with an X-Acto knife blade kind of a thing or just uh, use scissors. We'll see. We'll see what I decide. But uh, again, it just looks like a giant nail. I mean, as I looked at photos of uh, actual sculptors, uh, I found that the chisels they use really do just look like large nails. A lot of them do anyway. And I don't know if I need too much um, detail added to this hammer. Oh, let's uh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to put in a bottom to the the sort of shirt that she's wearing. I'll go ahead and break the contour a little bit there. I'm not going to go too much further though down with the uh, legs because I think that that requires refocusing the camera, and, I, and it seems sensible to me to just move on to uh, Vanellope here. So let's go ahead and do that. The star of the show, Vanellope von Schwitz, and um, I'm going to follow the same kind of pattern that I did. I'm going to erase the guidelines a little bit, and this is where things get a little interesting in terms of, you know, what's the difference between a chibi character and a, you know, Disney animated character that has certain chibi-like characteristics, but is uh, certainly not a, a full-blown chibi character. So um, let's, uh, let's watch and learn <laughs> as we draw uh, the eyes, first of all. Uh, as I said, uh, smaller proportionally to the face than most chibi characters' eyes. Um, and uh, I'm kind of playing around with things here a little bit because it is supposed to be chiseled out of stone, so 
you can't really have a black dot in the middle. It seems to me you could sort of carve out, uh, and you know, sculptors have been doing this for years, sort of carving in uh, indications of a, a pupil, um, sort of in defiance of logic, rather than having the ghostly, uh, more anatomically accurate uh, surface. I guess there's both kinds, but I'm uh, going in here and adding a upper eyelash line. Vanellope also sort of looking at us, although she she's not turned away so much as this character, so the eyes are not so extreme in terms of moving from uh, one side to the other. I think we are going to see some indication of the lower eyelash. In fact, the whole uh, area of the eyes being defined a bit more than you would uh, with chibi characters. That's one thing that's uh, kind of different. Um, I'm going to erase just a little bit more away right there. And let's go ahead and get um, eyebrows in place. Uh, Vanellope's eyebrows much thicker than uh, I would see on almost any chibi character. Now it's going to, for a moment, look like she's angry. Um, but we're, really we're going to just give her that sort of sassy uh, Vanellope attitude, as voiced by Sarah Silverman. Uh, when we add the smile. She won't look angry. Uh, but before we get to the smile, let's draw the nose. Now the nose is a huge difference in terms of um, chibi versus non-chibi. She has this very wide button nose, almost like jelly bean shaped kind of a nose. Uh, you would certainly never see this. Pretty much never see this uh, in chibi illustrations. A nose that is um, this shape that's given this much prominence. And let's go ahead, I'm going to completely erase this line and uh, get her smile in here. Um, considerably closer to the nose than it is to the chin. And just the mouth uh, much more defined than uh, we normally see in Chibi Land. I'm making it sound <laughs> like an actual location. Welcome to Chibi Land. Maybe it's a new theme park. Don't uh, don't steal my idea, guys. That could be a billion-dollar new industry, Chibi Land. Anyway, um, she does have. Uh, it seems to me it's not like exactly buck teeth, but um, uh, her teeth do sort of stand out quite prominently in the design of her mouth. Um, but otherwise, I think we've kind of got the. Oh, you know, I'm going to do little indications of. Uh, eyelashes. Again, I suppose if this is supposed to be a um, sculpture, she maybe will have carved this out somehow. Can you carve out eyelashes? Depends on your skill level, man. And uh, I'm going to bring down the eyelash line a little more so that her eyelids seem to be coming down over the eye. Uh, notice how it makes her look more relaxed uh, as I do that. And otherwise, I think we've got everything we need there for Vanellope's facial features. Now, I've say, taken quite a lot of time on that. It means to me I probably need to start zooming along with the hairstyle. But again, let's just stay committed to this idea of, um, of doing everything real time at this point of the, in the video anyway. Uh, I noticed a, a stray hair coming down, uh, at least in the one photo uh, image I was studying. And so I'm putting that in there. And then, yeah, just uh, the uh, split down the middle, roughly, and coming down and sort of tapering off into, um, again, the little strands of hair that go by the ears, kind of like uh, I did in my original character. And I'm going to cheat things a little thing, a little here. It probably should go much longer than that, but again, I'm thinking about having to cut this out later on. And I don't want this long little strand. Uh, let's go ahead and get the, the ears. Um, I noticed this in previous videos. It's sort of a House Disney style to create ears that look as if they were really sort of molded out of plastic and um, just only the very vaguest indications of uh, anatomy in there. Seems to be something they like to do. So these big chunky ears. Um, very loosely defined, and I forgive me if uh, um, Vanellope fans if I'm getting this wrong, but her hair is jet black, and it's a little hard to see sometimes the 
the actual structure, but it seems to me that it's curving back once you get these two things in place. It's, cur it's being pulled back, reminds me almost a little bit of my uh, Talia character that I created for Brody's Ghost, sort of being pulled all the way back, all the way around, until it becomes this. Um, ponytail back here. Now one thing that I, I didn't notice until I started studying, uh, the character design was that the, what holds her ponytail in place, it seems to me, is a, is a piece of red uh, licorice. I uh, hope I'm getting that right, and uh, if I am, uh, hats off to the designers. It's a very clever way of working in a, a piece of candy into her uh, costume design. So I'm putting in um, uh, some indication of this sort of the twist uh, that some of these uh, brands of licorice have and and as it comes up here either end of the strand of licorice again there seems to be a little bit of a, a twist here just to convey that structure I'm going to erase away just a bit here so as to get the other uh, side of the licorice in place. Well, I am taking an awful lot of time to do this uh, bit uh, real time here. What have I done already? I don't know, uh, like 18? I'm coming up on 20 minutes. Let's use 20 minutes as a, a time to stop <laughs> in terms of all this real time drawing. I think we've done most of the important stuff. We can come down here. Her clothing does have a, um, a hoodie. Again, something you might not notice until you start studying the character, and it goes back over her shoulder. There's maybe a little indication of it back here. Um, she's got this pocket in the front, so that it does sort of look like a sweat sweatshirt kind of a hoodie. You might see where you could stick your hands inside. I don't know. I don't know if her hands would fit inside <laughs> this, but the, there are the two little um, loops that come down. Man, that would be tough to chisel out of stone. But we're dealing with a very skilled chibi artist here. Uh, get the cuffs of her uh, sweatshirt in place. Maybe a bit of uh, wrinkles here at the elbow. And, oh, here's the fun part. This is maybe going to be the last part that I spend a lot of time talking about. Her skirt, uh, interestingly, splits into two layers. And then all uh, both of those layers have... Um, uh, quite a lot of pleating going on. It's sort of like a, a zig, I don't want to say zigzag, it's sort of like corrugated steel almost, uh, the pattern here. I don't know if I'm explaining this very well, but you're seeing me divide this into um, little subsections. And I guess when we get down here, if I make this part zigzag, then you begin to maybe understand the structure of the skirt that she's wearing. And so it kind of um, has to repeat. This line also has to zigzag. I don't know if I'm getting the structure quite right, but you get the idea, right people? Eh? And um, that might be it in terms of the real-time stuff. I guess we have enough here that I can sort of talk just a little bit about her leggings, which um, are uh, candy-striped, but in two different ways. This one over here, I'm just going to make three lines here for the simple candy stripe on this side, and then these ones are composed of three lines. And I think I can only fit like two of them in here, but uh, sort of interesting that they chose to make each leg have a slightly different pattern there. And sadly, I think that brings us to the end of things. Um, I'm going to go back to time lapse for finishing off the sort of blue jeans and shoes of this other character, but you're going to see me go straight from that uh, into, um, well, let's ink things up is what I'm going to do, and then we're going to later on come along uh, with the uh, markers and maybe a bit of colored pencil to add color. Sadly, an awful lot of that, maybe almost all of it, is going to have to be uh, in time lapse owing to all of the real time that I did for this part. Uh, of the video. Oh, you know, one last thing. One last thing, people. She does have these little indications of, like, candy speckled throughout her hair. If you want to get to the details. And I'm sure you do. There are, in fact, these little specks of candy, which is an interesting uh, design choice to finish off the character. They don't go absolutely everywhere on her hair. It seems to me that they kind of cluster uh, at the top here. 
Anyway, I think that finally brings us to the end of that. I'm going to go ahead and pull out my uh, Micron. Let's see if we got it here. Uh, permanent ink pen. Uh, my pen of choice, and uh, you're going to see me uh, do all in time lapse the uh, inking, and then we'll come back and maybe just do a touch of the coloring uh, real time. Okay, so I finished all the inking and now it's time to come in with markers to add color and I'm really going to focus on uh, just doing the sculpture here uh, for the real-time part of the coloring because this is kind of interesting to me. What we're doing is uh, using uh, really just blue um, to add a bit of shadow to this, imagining that the uh, sculpture is made entirely out of white marble and it's uh, I think it's going to create a kind of interesting effect with this character being full color and this character over here being uh, monochrome, uh, really just uh, white. And, and you might wonder, why are you using blue for the shadows? Shouldn't you use gray? Uh, and certainly I could uh, use gray, but uh, there is something about using uh, a, a sort of a pale shade of uh, either blue or purple. Uh, it seems generally to be those two colors, blue or purple, uh, for uh, creating shadows on an object that's white. Uh, and this would apply to like doing a scene that takes place in the snow. Very often uh, the shadows will be uh, indicated with uh, some shade of blue or, uh, as I said, purple, rather than just gray. And uh, I think in the case of an outdoor scene, it's based on reality, basically, that uh, the sky, the blue of the sky, begins to reflect uh, off of those shadows and create that effect. And uh, it may have been the Impressionists back in the 18th or 19th century who first uh, observed that. Who knows? Now I'm really just making things up. <laughs> In any case, you can see uh, the effect that it's beginning to have. Now what I'm probably going to do is also add just a little touch of uh, uh, colored pencil, and that'll um, refine, further refine this uh, shading. Uh, I wanted to make sure I used uh, the marker for getting some shading on this skirt here. People are probably going to ask, what marker is that? Spectrum Noir, uh, a shade of, uh, what number is that? Two, no, BT2. Sorry, it's wildly out of focus there. Uh, in any case, um, I am not, uh, certainly not advising you to run out and buy this particular brand of marker. People have said, heard me say this before, but I'll say it again. I don't, uh, I don't swear fealty to any one particular marker company. Just go to your local art supply store and uh, get whatever, you know, reasonably priced art markers they have. Um, rather than the cheapo markers that you would find at like a grocery store or a drug store, those markers are probably of very poor quality. But otherwise, I'm not like telling people, buy this. <laughs> Don't buy that. Uh, in any case, that probably is all that I can do for the real-time uh, markering. If you are curious to know more about my uh, coloring techniques for chibis, check out the uh, other chibi videos I've done. I'm going to link to the playlist uh, in the info box, and I certainly have co covered coloring um, uh, in some of these other videos. But uh, for now, I'm going to use time-lapse to go ahead and add color to this character. Okay, so I ended up bringing together an awful lot of stuff uh, at the last minute there. Colored pencils, my beloved gouache. Oh my goodness, it really is time to buy <laughs> a new one of these. Uh, but in any case, we're real close to the fun part of cutting out the uh, characters and popping them up. But before we do that, I want to add just a few little details down here. Allow me to refocus the camera. 
So one of the fun things about doing these pop-up uh, projects is you get to sort of play around with multiple uh, planes of existence in a way. And I'm going to be drawing down here uh, little pieces of uh, rubble, I guess you would call it, the, uh, the pieces of marble that she has uh, chipped away that have fallen to the ground. And um, yeah, just sort of putting them in a somewhat random arrangement, which in itself can be tricky, you might find, to make things look truly random. Uh, but one interesting thing is some of the pieces I'm going to put up here, which may seem strange. Right now it looks like they're floating in the air, but when we cut this out and pop it up, uh, this all becomes the uh, floor, I guess you'd have to say, uh, of this area. All of this, uh, even this area up here laying flat, whereas the characters are uh, popping up uh, at a you know 90 degree angle. So anyway, I thought I'd say a word about that. Basically, I'm going to apply the exact same technique here. I'm going to ink it. I'm going to add a little bit of watercolor, maybe some colored pencil uh, for drop shadows, and then we will finally be on to the big um, reveal of uh, cutting out the characters and popping them up. Okay, so I'm going to try something a little different in terms of how I cut this one out. I'm going to begin with this blade to just sort of uh, introduce a, uh, an entry point for uh, a pair of scissors. And then I'm going to try to do the rest of the cutting uh, with the scissors. So, um, again, no need, I don't think, to do this real time, but you can kind of see how I uh, just slit right along this one area with the blade. Uh, just uh, want to point out that uh, this line along here uh, is sh definitely should not be cut at any time. That should remain joined to the paper, and then everything else is going to get cut away. So bear with me, I'll go ahead and uh, pull out this ordinary pair of scissors and cut around the contours of uh, both of these characters. Okay, well, we're almost ready to finish this off. I wanted to point out that, you know, the knife actually is probably better for cutting this out. I had a lot of trouble uh, with the scissors. It didn't go as easily as I thought it would, so a little recommendation. Learn from my from the errors of my ways. I'm going to do one thing here, uh, which I like to do in these pop-up uh, paper craft videos, and that is to score. And I'm taking the uh, sort of dull side of the scissor uh, edge here and just going across to um, make it easier for this to fold all at once. And once I've done that, I think we are ready to roll. So let's go ahead and do it. All right, well, here we go. It is time to see if we can make this pop up chibi pop up. And so far, so good. You got to be careful that chisel. <laughs> Very delicate. Wouldn't want to snap that off, but it looks like it's going to be all right, and there we go. The Sculptor Chibi Project. Uh, many thanks to any of you who decide to follow along with this. I look forward to seeing uh, your results. You may choose uh, to replace Vanellope with some other character of your uh, liking. But uh, till then, let me go ahead and wind this one down. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. And I'll be back with another one real soon.